Hello fellow coffee botherers, I'm Kev from coffeeblog.co.uk and in this video I'm going to be reviewing the Gran Gaggia. The Gran Gaggia is Gaggia's entry level espresso machine range. These machines range from £115 to £150. This is a Gran Gaggia Prestige which is the most expensive one and it's just because it's got a stainless steel case in it. This one is £149 at the moment from Gaggia UK and I'll put a link to them in the description below. The deluxe version, which is mainly plastic with a bit of stainless steel, is £139. And the Grand Gaggia style, which is the same machine but it's all plastic, is £115. Now, this is a low cost machine, I mean, 115 quid to 150 quid is a really inexpensive espresso machine. I'm not going to expect it to rival the likes of the new Gaggia Classic Pro or the Sage Bambino Plus because it isn't that level of machine it is a really low cost espresso machine but versus other low cost espresso machines on paper the Grand Gadget has got a bit going for it so I wanted to try it it's got an actual brew boiler stainless steel brew boiler versus the thermoblock boilers that you usually get in lower cost machines which is interesting for a machine of this cost it's got a one litre water tank so it's a fairly small water tank but really easy to fill so just pull it out like that That's a really good feature by the way, it's a nice, easy water tank to take out of the phone. And actually for an ambient cup warmer, i.e. a cup warmer that is just picking up the heat from the machine, because there's a heating element for it, it is actually quite warm. That's not bad. You've got a couple of holes in here, one to keep your scoop and tamper in, and the other one to keep your gasket in for the little coffee pot things that I'm not going to talk about because I'm not interested in such matters. Coffee in bags, whatever next. It's got a mechanical valve versus a solenoid valve that the Gaja Classic has. You've got steam valve here, you've got a Panarello steam wand, you've got the drip tray, you've got your water tank which I've mentioned, cup warmer which I've mentioned and we've got the water filter. Porter filter is a bit weird actually, it springs back. Ah, it's hot! <laughs> but if I take the uh, basket out without burning myself, and I come up to the camera and show you, it's actually a normal basket, not a fresh basket. But the porter filter itself is the pressurised bit, and it's forced through the small hole the bottom so it's pressured but it's pressurized via the porter filter not the basket which is how it's usually done. It's a 53 millimeter porter filter by the way and this thing the scoop under it is also tamper. With it being a pressurized basket tamping isn't as important as with an unpressurized or standard basket but if I was going to own this machine, I would be sourcing a proper tamper. I wouldn't be trying to use something like this, to be perfectly honest. Oh look, the grinder, where'd that come from? So I'm using the Sage Smart Grinder Pro today, which is a great little grinder. Fairly inexpensive, about £200. You can get them a bit cheaper when they're on offer. There is a slightly cheaper version of it, the Dose Control Pro, which is about £150, but again, you can get it cheaper than more expensive even 30 sometimes when it's on offer. There's also a grinder called the Nimox Lux which you can get from Gadget Direct and I'm going to be reviewing that grinder soon. There's also the Iberical MC2 which is a bit cheaper than the Smart Grinder Pro. It's not as user friendly, it's not as aesthetically pleasing, it's not as easy to use as beginner friendly and user friendly. It's a bit rough around the edges but it's probably a little bit better in terms of performance for espresso. And if you go to coffeeblog.co.uk forward slash grinders, you'll find a post I've written there about these grinders I'm talking about and other grinders that would be suitable to use with the Grand Gadget. Hello. With pressure porter filters, it doesn't really make a great deal of difference what you do in terms of grind size. You can't really dial in with pressure baskets. With standard baskets, you'd be dialing in to get that perfect contraction. But with pressure baskets, you can just put pre-ground in or grind or whatever your grinder is set at, which I suppose is a positive. 
for pressure force filters, the only negative is that you can't quite get the same perfect extraction using a pressure basket as you could from being perfectly dialed in with the standard basket. These scales, by the way, are some really cheap scales, 20 quid I got on Amazon. They're not perfect. I'll put a link in the description below. They do some backup scales. I usually use the Brewista Smart Scales, which I'll put a link in the description below as well, but I left them at home, so I'm using this backup scale that I've got. It's okay, I mean, for 20 quid, it isn't all that bad. I prefer using the Brewista, but you know, that's an 80, 90 pound set of scales versus 20 quid. I'm gonna try it with 17 grams. I'm not sure if 16 might be better with this three mil water filter. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna try 17. And I'm gonna go two to one extraction. So 17 grams, <laughs> 17 times two, um, 34. I'm using this little plastic tamper, but what I would focus on if you're using a basket like this, a pressurized force filter, is getting it level, not firmly tamping. So I wouldn't worry too much about being super firm with the tamp. I would just try and get it level. It's not all that loud. I'm just pre warming the cup down there from the one dude. isn't all that loud. It's very similar, I'd say, to the new Gadget Classic Pro. It's similar to the Bambino Plus. My older Gadget Classic 2003 is much, much louder than that, and I don't know if that's just because it's an older machine and it's rattling a bit, but it is louder. And when I'm using pressured water filter, I wouldn't bother personally timing the shot because you can't really do anything to control the flow. It's all in the water filter. So, if I was using a standard basket, I would be timing the shot and weighing the shot, and I'd be wanting to get from 17 to 34 grams in around 28 to 32 seconds. Using a pressure force filter, I'm just going to weigh the shot. I'm just going from 17 to 34 in however long it takes. And there's that unusual <laughs> spring back effect that you get with this. Filter, which is interesting. And I can just fit this cup under the water filter on this scale, which is handy. You can't always do that, depending on the height you put. You just press the shot button to start and then press the shot button again to stop. I've got a little bit over, but I mean, I'm to, that's actually quite good. But this is freshly roasted speciality coffee beans from a small batch coffee roaster. It is really nice coffee, and that actually tastes pretty good. I know from experiments I've done before that if I tried it via a machine with a standard basket and, importantly, nailed the extraction, that I would get a better tasting shot if I tasted them both side by side. But what's important there is that perfect extraction. With this, with no dampening, just ground some coffee beans, shoved it in the basket, pulled the shot, and got an acceptable tasting shot of espresso with using a machine with a standard basket to be fair to the pressured baskets. Yes, the potential is there for a better tasting shot, but not without significant investment in time, energy, and coffee beans, which means money, because you have to dial in to get perfect extraction. If you do what I've just done with a standard basket and just set any grind, and just pull the shot without any dialing in, you're likely to get a much worse tasting shot than this. You're likely to end up with wildly over or under extracted espresso. Whereas, in my humble opinion, what you tend to get if you're using decent coffee beans with pressured baskets, you tend to get normally slightly under extracted espresso with no dialing in. So, Really, although I say that I don't like pressured baskets, actually there is a lot to be said for them. You can just grind some coffee, pull a shot, and have an acceptable tasting shot of espresso. Now let's try the milk. I'm actually going to use soy milk today because I forgot to bring cow's milk with me. And I happen to have happy, happy soy boy here from 
when I did the soy milk comparison video and I've not brought the Motta jug with me that I usually use so I'm going to use this which is the jug from the Sage Bambino Plus. I'm going to do this two ways. First of all I'm going to use a Panarello and then I'm going to take off the Panarello and I'm going to do it manually using the pipe that is underneath it as a single hole steam tip. Let's see what the Panarello does just to give you an idea. Turn the steam on. Steam lights come on. Normally by the way I've not used this machine enough to know whether it works the same with the Grand Gazier, but with the Gazier Classic, I would start steaming before the light comes on because I find you get better use of the small boiler that way. But I'm not as familiar with the Grand Gazier, so I haven't tried that. I would imagine it would work the same, to be honest. Let's try using the Panarello. Using a Panarello, you just stick it in and turn it on. So just open the steam valve. I should really use a thermometer, but I'm used to gauging the temperature of the milk just by using my hand on the jug. Quite quiet steam. You don't get that knocking sound that you normally get with thermobot machines. That's about hot enough. Close the steam valve. And as you can see, we've got really thick dry foam. Dry as in firm, stiff foam rather than velvety microfoam. And if you like your cappuccinos like that, then great, use the Panarello. Can't really do much latte out with that. Spoon some more if you like it that way. There you go. If you like the cappuccinos like that, Panarellos are great, that's really what they're about. But if like me you prefer flat whites, which are made using a much wetter velvety microfoam, the very small bubbles have been very well distributed throughout the milk, or if you like latte, or if you like wetter cappuccino, then what you want to do is this. Pull the Panarello off, revealing the metal pipe, which we're going to use as a single hole steam tip. You can get hot water, out of the Grand Gazier, by the way. You do that by pressing the espresso button, the shot button, and having the steam valve opened. So if you turn the valve open, you open the steam valve, and then press the shot button, you see you get water. And the one that is pretty quick actually, Dispensing water out of a steam wand. So I'm just going to pull another shot because I want to use the steam wand without the Panarello on. So I might as well pour that. This time I'm using a glass just to get a bit of a better shot. I mean a better shot in terms of video. You can't fit this glass on with the scale so just going to hope for the best. You see what I mean? You get a really good tremor using pressured baskets. It does look good, but as I say, the thing is you'll get that even with rubbish coffee. So it'll look great even if it doesn't taste great. So, turn the steam on, purge the wand, or the steam pipe, which I'm using as a wand. Some noise in after. That ripping paper sound which is air and drawn into the room. Now I'm lifting up the jug slightly and just wanting to roll the milk. 
the sun over the there. So you just want to get to roll, just want that microfilm to distribute within the rest of the mill while it heats up. Got the jug at a bit of an angle. I'm not going to do a how to guide on steaming with this machine because I've only used it a couple of times. I need to have a few more goes of it before I do that. But hopefully, I won't make a pig's ear of this. I'm not great at steaming and pouring latte out with. Soy milk. I don't usually use soy milk or any other alternative milks, to be perfectly honest. So I've not had as much experience with it. Knocking some of the bigger bubbles out. Now, if you can see, it isn't anything like we got with the Panarello. It's glossier, it's wetter. Nowhere near as firm, but smaller bubbles that are better distributed throughout all of the milk. Give you a velvety latte or flat white or wetter cappuccino. As I said, I'm not great at pouring latte out with alternative milks, but there you go. For a hundred quid, really quite impressed with this machine. The espresso quality is fairly good, even though it is a machine with pressure porter filter. If you're using decent coffee beans, you're gonna get okay espresso from this machine. Yes, if you have the Geja Classic Pro or the Save Bambino Plus or another espresso machine with a standard basket and a capable espresso grinder, and you spent time energy and money and coffee beans and dialing in you can get a better shot but as you saw just shoving coffee in the basket and pulling a shot with no effort dialing in the shot no wasting money and dialing in you get with decent coffee and i put an emphasis on that with decent coffee you get acceptable espresso from a cheap machine like this with a pressure porter filter. If you were to go to a supermarket, pick up a bag of pre ground or whole bean commodity coffee, and that's what you tend to get mainly at supermarkets, etc. Coffee that's been sitting on the shelf for who knows how long it was roasted, who knows where, who knows when, and has a you know, year or more sell by date, and drink it via a machine like this, it will make it look the part, it will give it crema, but may look great and taste disgusted because a machine like this can make an espresso look the part but it can't make it taste the part. If you start off with decent coffee beans, freshly roasted, using a machine like this from 115 to 150 pounds, actually you're going to get pretty decent espresso. As I've said, when I've done tests in the past, when I've done blind tasting, using the same great quality freshly roasted coffee beans via pressured baskets and via standard baskets, I can tell the difference in between the two and the one that I've spent time dialing in via the standard basket tastes better but using great quality coffee the espresso via the pressured basket was still drinkable I could tell the difference but it was still drinkable still acceptable so what I'm saying is use a machine like this fine if you've got a tight budget and you want a machine like this for about 100 quid and you want to use pre-ground coffee or a really cheap coffee grinder that's absolutely fine just use decent coffee freshly roasted with a roasted date on it so you know it's been roasted within the past few weeks say with commodity coffee you don't have a roast date you've got no idea when it was roasted and they have a long sell by date a long shelf life but with speciality coffee decent coffee beans you'll get decent espresso even by a pressure Porter filters from a really inexpensive machine like the Grand Gadget. So overall, I'm really impressed with this little inexpensive espresso machine from 115 to 150 quid. It'll give you pretty decent espresso if you use decent coffee beans. It'll create fairly decent milk texture if you use the pipe by removing the Panarello. And there's nothing really offensive about the machine. A couple of little niggles 
the drip tray slides off and you clean it. The drip tray is fairly small in volume. It's only got a one litre water tank, but you know it's really easy to remove and fill. So there you go, my review of the Grand Gadget. And if you like the look of this machine, I've put a link in the description below to Gadget Direct in Ellen, who are the distributor for Gadget in the UK. And just bear in mind that Gadget Direct are the guys who do all of the warranty for the Gadget machine for UK stock, stock that is intended for the UK. If you go online and do some shopping based on price, you will find most Gadget machines slightly cheaper than some other retailers, but just bear in mind that some of these machines have been sold from websites that look like they're in the UK and it looks like you're buying UK stock, but they're actually being grey imported directly to the customer from Italy, which means you don't have a UK warranty. You've got a return to base warranty back to Italy, which can be expensive if required. And just bear in mind as well that this machine is wired in directly, so it's not just a standard kettle plug. So if you do buy this machine and it ends up being grey imported directly from Italy, it'll probably come with a two pin euro peel plug and you'll have to put an adapter onto that to plug it in here in the UK, which I know is a bit frustrating when you bought a machine that you thought was coming from the UK. So just bear that in mind. If you're buying from Gadget Direct, you will definitely get stock straight from the UK. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please click the like button. Cheers. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, click this image around here somewhere and subscribe to my channel. Tatty bye. Get the chuffing lid on.